This video is a tutorial for Google Keep on the iPad. Google Keep is a free note taking app that integrates really well with your existing Google account, whether that's for personal use, business or education. If you find this video useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. At the end of this video, I'll tell you a bit about my Patreon account if you want to provide even more support. When you open up Google Keep, this is what it will look like. In the top right hand corner, you'll see an icon which will allow you to sign in to your different Google accounts. If you have several Google accounts, you can easily switch between them here. In the top left hand corner, we can see an icon with three lines. This is a menu. Under this menu, we can navigate to different parts of the app, view our labels, and also get to our app settings. And from here, we have a few different options. Firstly, we can decide on the default order of items as they are created. So we can choose to have new items added to the bottom, or if I want new items to appear first, I can turn this setting off. If we're making use of checklists, we can make sure that ticked items are moved to the bottom of that list. If we link to any particular items, such as websites, we can choose whether this is displayed as a rich link preview. Inside Google Keep, we're able to set reminders. The default times are displayed here. And if we want to change any of these times, we can click on the time to adjust it. Finally, we can choose whether we want to enable sharing or turn this off. There are two ways of creating a new note inside Google Keep. The first is to click the plus icon in the bottom right corner of the screen. If we have a look at the bottom left, we can see some shortcuts. We can immediately create a new to-do list, a new drawing, a new audio recording, or to insert a picture. I'm going to start by clicking the plus icon in the bottom right corner. When we do this, we can immediately begin creating our new note. We can give the note a title. And we can immediately start typing. If I double tap on a word, it will select it. If I triple tap on a sentence, it will select the whole sentence. When I do this, a contextual menu will appear, allowing me to cut, copy or paste. If I tap on a blank area inside the note, I can choose to select all the text, or I can paste something that I've previously copied. At the bottom of the screen, I can see two arrows. This is to undo or to redo. In the bottom left corner of this panel, I can see a plus icon and here I can insert several different items into my note. The first allows me to take a photo. Choose image allows me to import an image from my iPad's photo gallery. I can insert many images into each note and these are displayed as a gallery at the top of the note. The images are displayed at the top in reverse order from when you add them meaning the first image you added will be the last image displayed. For each one of your imported images, you can annotate them. If you tap or click on an image, it will expand it. In the top right hand corner, you can see a pen tool. If you click on that, a menu is displayed at the bottom. You can annotate using your finger or a stylus or an Apple pencil. I have three different types of pen tools here. The first two are typical pen tools. The last one is a highlighter. If I want to erase anything, I can choose the eraser tool. If I click on a pen and then click on it again, I get a menu giving me several different options. Firstly, I can choose the color. Then I can choose the pen thickness. If I want an expanded selection of colors, I can click this arrow.
This works for each of the pen tools. The first tool on this menu is a selection tool. When I've chosen this, I can draw a box around something that I've drawn and then choose to move it to a different part of the image. Within this window, I also have undo and redo if I've made a mistake. In the top right hand corner of this window, we can see three dots. Under this menu, I can choose to send this annotated image to delete it, or I can add a grid. I can choose between square, dots or lines. Changes to the image are automatically saved when I hit the back button in the top left corner of this window. If I go back to the plus menu in the bottom left corner, I can choose to add a drawing. And this works in much the same way as when I showed you the annotation tools over the image. The pen tools are identical and I can click on a pen again to change the settings. Once again, I can use the selection tool to select some text and move it around. And just like before, I have undo and redo and the same menu to send, delete or to show a grid. Whilst in this mode, I can make use of pinch to zoom to zoom into an area on this drawing and continue writing or drawing on this page. Any notes or drawings you create are added to the top of this note. Let's go back to the bottom left corner of the screen and click the plus icon. From here, I can add an audio recording. When I tap this, it will record my voice as well as give me a transcription of what I've said. This is a recording that I have made using Google Keep. You can edit the transcription by tapping and changing the text. If you want to delete the audio recording, you can press the X at the end. Or to play back, you can press the play icon. If you're making a to-do list, you can click the plus icon and choose tick boxes. This converts your note into a list of items that you can then tick off for each item. You can rearrange the items on your list by clicking or tapping on the six dots next to each item and then dragging it around to rearrange. When an item on your list has been completed, you can tap on the square to check it off. This item is then moved to the bottom of your list. In the bottom right hand corner of this note, you can see three dots. From here, I can delete the note, I can duplicate it, I can send it, or I can add collaborators. This is particularly useful if you're using G Suite for business or education. You can also add labels to each one of your notes. You can use a pre-existing label or create your own. These labels are then added to the bottom of your note. A quick way of adding a label is to use the hashtag. This brings up a menu of your existing labels or you can create a new one. Back on this menu at the bottom right corner of the screen, finally, we can give our note a colour. There are several different colours to choose from. Now if we move to the top right of the screen, we can see three icons. The first allows us to pin the note, making sure it's always at the top. The second allows us to add a reminder attached to this note. This reminder can be set to a date or time 
or when I've reached a certain location. If I want a location-based reminder, I will need to enable the setting that means Google Keep always uses location data at all times. If I'm using a date, I can choose a date from the list and a time. And if I want a repeated reminder, I can set it to daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, or at a customized interval. The last icon of the three allows us to archive the note if I'm not going to be using it. If I've archived the note and I want to get back, I can tap on the three lines in the top left corner to bring up this menu and choose archive. To restore this note to the main part of my note gallery, I can tap on it and choose the archive button in the top right corner again. This will unarchive this note. There are a few ways of searching for specific notes or items within it. At the top, I have a search bar and in here I can type to search for a note that contains that word. Under this search menu, I can search for all notes that contain lists, contain images, recordings or drawings. I can also search by labels or by the custom colors for each label. If we go back to the menu at the top left part of the screen, I have a few more search options. I can search for all my notes or I can look for all notes that contain reminders. I can search for notes based on the label and it's from here I can create additional labels or edit them. Organizing notes is very simple. If I tap and hold on the note, I've entered selection mode. This then allows me to select multiple notes. Or in the top right corner, I have some icons that allows me to pin the note, to change the color, to add a label, to archive it. Or if I click on the three dots, I can delete it, make a copy, or copy that note to Google Docs. If I want to rearrange the notes, I can tap and hold on the note, then drag it to change the order of my notes. That is it for this tutorial on using Google Keep for the iPad. If you found it useful, please consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing. And also please check out my Patreon page. My new Patreon page contains three membership tiers giving you access to exclusive content, ad-free viewing, and much more. You'll find a link to it in the description below. That's it for this video. I will be back soon with some more iPad tutorials.